welcome to my god ministries i am your host anita reverend anita morris and today we are going to gather in prayer and then also recall the plans of god in the old testament of the prophet jeremiah in chapter 29 verse 11. let's go in prayer heavenly father we thank you father for your graciousness towards us towards all humankind we thank you, Lord God, for your tender mercies and your loving kindness, your chesed. That's without end. It's boundless love towards us. And I just thank you, Lord God, that your eyes go to and from seeking to reward those who diligently seek you and also those who fear you have a reverence and a, a worship, a devotion towards you, God. I thank you, Lord God, that you do not leave us empty, but you fill us daily with each day's need. We thank you, Lord God, for surrounding us with your angels encamped around about us, keeping us in your ways. And we just thank you, Lord God, for this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For morning by morning, your mercies are new, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Thank you, gracious Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Yeshua Messiah, who is Jesus Christ, the anointing and his anointed one. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for the blood of the Lamb who bled and died, who was crucified, buried, and rose the third day and given us life and life more abundantly. And this gospel, this great gospel we believe. And we just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to continue to keep ourselves in belief and of good faith. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. In the word of God in the Old Testament of the prophet Jeremiah, when the children of Israel experienced captivity, um, unfortunate circumstances were surrounding that captivity. They were led to Babylon. Babylon is interpreted a land of confusion and Jerusalem in the Hebrew is a land of peace the city of peace so they go from peace to a place of confusion that leads us to gather today and to contemplate Jeremiah 29 11 what that really is when God mentions says he says and told the prophet Jeremiah to speak to children of Israel and say to them, for I know the plans and thoughts. Say that as if God is speaking to you, not just in the Old Testament, but he is sincerely saying this to us. For I know the plans and thoughts, the imagination that's in God's mind about us. He knows the plans and the thoughts. He said, I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace, basically for you to succeed. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster, not for destruction. To give you a future and a hope giving you an anticipated end what all of your hopes and your expectations that you hoped in god will be he said i will give that to you to give you a future and a hope and then verse 12 mentions then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear your voice. God is listening. 
when we still ourselves, when we are quieted and relinquish our doubts and fears to God and say, Lord, here I am. I'm listening. I am at your feet. I'm not worrying what tomorrow may bring. I know that you have a future and a hope for me. I know that you have plans for me to succeed. I know the thoughts that you have for me, says the Lord, and they are for my success, for my peace, my shalom, my well-being. And I know it's not temporary, but it's for a lifetime. It's, we call it Bari Olam in the Hebrew. It means forever covenant. And that's what God made when he exhibited the book of Ruth. It says a forever covenant. And that emanates God's love to never leave us nor forsake us. That he's ever watching and he's always listening ready to hear and to answer when we call in verse 12 it continues on in Jeremiah 29 verse 12 then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear your voice God is waiting to hear your voice today not just on Sundays, not just on Mondays or Tuesdays. Every day he awaits to hear your voice. And he said, I will listen to you. And then with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me. Like a vital necessi necessity. Like a, a thirst you will have a thirst a hunger for God even in the New Testament it says those who thirst and hunger for righteousness they shall be filled and that's what God is seeking when you seek for him with your whole heart with a deep longing I'm waiting to fulfill to fulfill that deep longing of necessity that you have been waiting He's eagerly awaiting to fulfill that longing that you have in the depths of your soul that is at the root to cause you to grow, to succeed, to be at peace. He said, then with deep longing you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity that God is your all in all that whatever you need, you know you have it in God. Even in when you have a dollar bill and it says, in God we trust, that is a necessity that this country was built on God, faith in God. So we know that the founding fathers of the United States have trusted in the vital necessity at the beginning and put there in God we trust stamps on our currency in the United States it says then with the deep longing you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity and you will find me not only will you seek me but I will be found of you you will find God you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart not with just a partial being disingenuous remember it the book of james in the new testament it mentions that some people ask and require or request of the lord with the miss but and ask for things of god with the wrong motives in error and i don't want you to do that being disingenuous because you want to do it for your own selfish reasons or your motive in your heart i have no idea what your motive in the heart of your heart desire is but when it's pure and honest and built full with integrity of god and it leads to peace god is waiting and eager to see that 
the wholeness of your heart is fully encompassed about God's expectation that your spirit is seeking God's spirit all your eternal longings everything that exists in you every innate thing every organ every blood cell everything that's warming your heart everything that brings you good cheer that brings you all the complexities of your emotions is all brought before God and is longing for God your happy moments your stressful moments your anxious moments are seeking the necessity of God to be found of God so that he could hear of those anxious desires, those happy, those joyous to be fulfilled. He said, when you search for me, when you search for me and require of me, when you request, you will find me. When you search for me with all your heart, not half-heartedness. God doesn't want any half-heartedness. It's just something with the heart that God knows that he sees and searches the heart. We as human beings, we cannot know what is in the heart of human beings. But God says that we will know them by their fruit, which is by their actions when people have actions, whether it's good actions or bad actions because out of the goodness of the heart the mouth speaks they act they do and out of the evilness of a heart that's what people act and do because of the evil heart but in essence in the root of things how people are motivated God knows people's motives and that it cannot be hid from God so that is what God is saying. When you seek me and search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes. And I'm not talking about fortune telling. That means I will restore the many founding of your blessings that you had before. Some people said, well, I had this, I owned a house, I had a car, I had my own independence, and that was all taken from me in the midst of calamity. When I went through this, or when I had went through this divorce, or when a storm came and the hurricane tore down my house, everything was ripped apart. Or when my, um, some sudden destruction happened where I couldn't regain my strength and Someone was in the hospital, they couldn't repair it, but God said, when you do this, I will restore. Let God do the working. But he said, I will restore your fortune when you do and seek God. Not the world, but when you're seeking God with your whole heart, God will fine tune all of the yearnings of your soul and bring it into the alignment the way it should be without any schisms, without any uh, or um, bad negative vibes, but it will be sown in peace as righteousness is sown in peace and it brings forth good fruit of God, which is good soil, good actions. I'm not saying everyone will measure and take kind to your good actions but God sees your heart and let that guide you let God guide you in your every step it said I will restore God said I will restore your fortunes and I will free you and gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you says the Lord and I will bring you back to the place where I sent you into exile or captivity or where you had found yourself in a calamity, I will bring you back to that place of peace, a place of restoration, a place where you are growing and thriving again. God wants to do that for you, beloved. He wants to take you and bring you back. But you must, you must, you must, you must listen and obey God's words of him asking you. If you will do this, God says, I will do this. 
It does not happen overnight. It says those that diligently seek the Lord. He is rewarded to them that diligently seek God. In the Old Testament, some people didn't receive a reward in their right now blessing. But maybe it happened later on in their lives. Like as you remember the book of Job. Where calamity came upon Job. And his wife said, why don't you curse God and die with all this calamity? All our children have died. You got boils all around your face and you are just broke, busted and disgusted. You are on top, but nobody is willing to look at you even now. Why don't you curse God and die? And beloved, some people look at you and your situation as it is only for a season and it's very temporary. And God says, that's my daughter, that's my son, and I will reward him for their faith. They trusted in the living God and they did not succumb to the wiles of the enemy to sow negative seed when they were going through, but they sowed life. And God is want you to sow life when you're going through. Don't let your situation become a crutch to you but arise above it and beloved and those that are bitter that can't engage with people's joy the joy of the Lord is their strength and I want you to know those that are kind of slighted because they don't have a person to share their joy with I want you to recall God's joy the joy of the Lord is your strength don't let someone's bitterness to discourage you for enjoying God's life's joy that he has for you. Amen. And they too can have life's joy. It found, found that is found in the Lord and God. Because he's saying, he's mentioned that in 2911 in Jeremiah 2911. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. And then with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me as a necessity. And you will find me when you search with, search for me with your whole, whole heart, with all of your heart. And I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will, I will restore your fortunes and I will free you. God will free you from your own mind, from trying to uh, please people, but please God. He will free you to enjoy all the res restoration of his blessings, that none of that will get in the way. I will free you and gather you from all the nations, all the backstabbers, from all where those people have submerged you and oppressed you says the Lord, and I will bring you back to a place where I sent you into exile. I will bring you back to that place, that posture where you can enjoy God's fortunes and God's blessings he has for you. But you must hold on to me, Jeremiah 29, 11, and trust this for yourselves, beloved. In Jeremiah 29, 11, I'm going to regurgitate because I want this to stick with you throughout 2019. I had read this at the Christmas party, going into 2019, Christmas party, and I was about rebuked by my leadership as a chaplain to give them a message saying, God has plans for you, members of our unit, plans to bring you success to give you peace and not of harm or disaster. And this was as they were going through different crisis situations of different kinds. I cannot mention that. But at the same token, God said, I want to restore you. I want to heal you. I have peace for you. And this is what God says, for I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you. His thoughts are greater than our own thoughts. I'd rather have God's thoughts and meditate on his thoughts Meaning that his thoughts are so, what do you call it, um, magnitude. It has great magnitude and it's infinite. 
without end. Great are his thoughts he has towards us. And our souls know right well. His thoughts are greater, are higher than our own infinite. And finite, I said, my neat thoughts. For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace, shalom, total peace and well-being and not for disaster. And when God, even Christ, when he was talking in the Gospels, when you start hearing the disciples speak with God and speak with God in Christ incarnate, which is Jesus Christ, when we start talking about the Gospels, God in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus mentions peace, be still. When they were going across the water and they saw Jesus walk on water, Peter asked the Lord, can I walk on water? And Jesus said, come. Oftentimes I saw, I heard the C-O-M-E meant to see only me. When you focus on God, you only see God. That's where your faith is strong, or the strongest, I should say. And we get distracted. We fall off course in disaster when we focus and we get our focus off God and on the wrong thing. And that's when he says, follow peace, plans for peace of well-being and not for a disaster, to give you a future and hope. God is still God. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not, beloved. And his plans for you are the same. He declared your end from the beginning. Even when you start to read in the book of Psalm, I believe Psalm 119, he said, you've written all about me. You know, before all of my days were, are, were numbered, you knew them before the foundations of the world. How vast is God's thoughts he has for us and to anticipate our success, to cheer us on. If you don't have any physical persons to cheer you on, know that in the heavens are cheering you on. The birds are cheering you on. The flowers are cheering you on. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so you know, know that you are loved. Know that you are thought of. Know that you are precious in God's sight. Even in Isaiah 43, it mentions that I love you and you are honored and precious, says the Lord, and his love towards you. I even have it on my business card as a mission statement. As a mission statement. I don't know, I'll go as, it reads it right there of all my God ministries. And it reads, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, says the Lord. Not because we did of any mighty deeds, but God saw that we were precious and that he honors us and he wills to love us. And even when we didn't love ourselves or didn't have love towards God, God said, I first love you. He loved us first. Not because we loved him, but he first loved us and gave himself for us. And that's how and we ought to love one another. And when that love is not reciprocated or unaccepted, we can still walk in love and continuity with God and shake the dust off our feet when it's not received and keep going with God. Keep loving, keep blessing and don't speak ill will of your neighbor. Just let God be God and he'll saw all the things that we cannot understand in this human world. But in the spirit, God said, the spirit knows the mind of the spirit. When he's placed his Holy Spirit in you, you have an unction that cannot be taken from you because it's a witness to God's power, his direction for you. For he knows the plans he has for you, plans for peace and not for disaster, to give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. To God be all the glory. Go with God. Go with God, beloved. Go with God. Amen.
Jesus lies in you. And if God be for us, then who? Who can be against us? In everything, give thanks. And this is the will concerning us. God bless you and have a great victorious April, Easter, Resurrection Sunday. And hope and keep your hope in God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen and amen.